Today, I'm going to show you how to make the best scones. The great thing about scones is once you have a great master recipe, you can use it to make all kinds of variations. So I'm going to show you just that our go-to scones recipe. You can change this up a hundred different ways. It is so easy and everybody loves it. Also, stay tuned. I'm going to show you my personal favorite way to make scones, the filling and an amazing glaze. Oh, it's so good. And I'm craving scones, so let's get started. We'll start with our dry ingredients. In a large mixing bowl, combine your flour, granulated sugar, some baking powder, and salt. Thoroughly whisk that together. You wanna make sure it's really well combined. Whisking also helps to aerate the flour so you don't have to sift it. Next, we'll add the butter. You'll need one stick of unsalted butter and make sure it's cold right out of the refrigerator. Dice up your butter into small cubes. You can also dice the butter ahead of time if you want to do some prep work and just put it back in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Add your diced butter to your flour mixture and lightly stir just to coat those butter pieces and some flour. Now we'll need to cut the butter into the flour. And my favorite tool for doing this is a pastry cutter or pastry blender. I'll leave a link to this pastry cutter in the notes, but if you don't have one, you can use the tines of a fork to cut your butter into the flour. A pastry blender is inexpensive, but will make this process so much faster and easier. Continue working the butter into the flour until you see pea-sized crumbs. If you're adding a fruit to your scones, for example, we're making blueberry scones today, this is the time when you wanna fold them in. If you're adding fruit, make sure you thoroughly pat it dry with paper towels so you're not incorporating too much moisture into the dough. Gently fold just until they're coated in some flour. Another tip to ensure that butter stays cold is to keep that bowl refrigerated while you mix together your wet ingredients. I like to measure out my heavy cream into a measuring cup, then add the egg right into it, followed by my vanilla extract. And of course, we're using our homemade vanilla extract. It's made with just two ingredients, and I will link to the recipe in the notes. Beat that together with a fork until it's really well blended. Now add all of your liquid ingredients into your dry ingredients. Now fold that together with a spatula. You want to mix just until the flour looks moistened. Make sure you're not over mixing the dough. When you see the dough is starting to come together, dump it out onto a clean work surface. Pull the dough together into a ball of dough. You might need to fold it once or twice just to make sure that you've got it all coming together. The key is not to handle the dough too much because you don't want that butter to start warming up. If your dough seems too sticky, you can sprinkle it with a little bit of flour, and if it seems too dry, you can drizzle with a little bit more heavy cream. Once you've formed your ball of dough, start shaping it into a disc. You want it to be about one inch thick and six to seven inches in diameter. You can cut these several different ways. I love to cut them into triangles, but you can also use a round biscuit cutter. I find that cutting into triangles creates a little bit less wasted dough, and it's easier. Whatever you're using to cut your scones, make sure you cut straight down into the dough without using a sawing motion. This will ensure a better rise. I'm using my bench scraper, but you can also use a knife to cut straight down through your scones. I'm cutting these into eight scones. Keep in mind, if you want to cut 12, they will be smaller and will bake faster. Now carefully transfer your scones to a parchment lined baking sheet. You can use your bench scraper or a spatula to help you lift up the scones and transfer them if they're sticking at all. And if you lose a crumble here and there, don't worry, they'll still turn out delicious. Brush the tops of your scones with a little bit more heavy cream or you can use milk if that's what you have on hand. Then sprinkle generously with horse sugar. The sugar gives these scones a golden glow and adds some sweetness because keep in mind, the scones aren't overly sweet by themselves. Now, because scones rise better when they're cold, I like to refrigerate these for at least 15 minutes before they bake. So while those are chilling in the fridge, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also pre-chill them like this overnight if you want fresh scones in the morning. Bake your cold scones in a full preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 22 minutes. I find that when I put fruit in the scones, it takes closer to 22 minutes. All right, these have puffed up beautifully. They're golden brown at the edges and fully cooked through. You wanna let those cool completely to room temperature before applying any kind of glaze. 
You can use a simple vanilla glaze or we're gonna do a lemon glaze for these blueberry scones because lemon and blueberry are so good together. Add your powdered sugar to a small bowl, then add fresh lemon zest. The zest really makes this lemon glaze, so do not skip it. And make sure when you zest a lemon, you're just getting that yellow zest portion and not the bitter white pith underneath. And yes, we added the zest of an entire lemon. Next, we're gonna add some fresh squeezed lemon juice. Start with a tablespoon and then add more to reach your desired consistency. You don't want your glaze to get too thin or it'll just run off of your scone, and you also don't don't want it to be so thick that you can't drizzle it. We're gonna pull out some seeds that landed in there and thankfully a glaze is easy to repair. If it gets too thick, just add a little more juice. If it's too thin, add a little more powdered sugar. All right, that looks perfect. All that's left to do is to drizzle the glaze on and enjoy these Fabulous scones. And you do wanna make sure that they're at room temperature before you add the glaze. So they definitely have cooled down and they are ready to serve up. Cause the glaze can get a little melty and just run off of them if they're too warm. Although I do love to eat a good warm scone. <laughs> All right, here we go. And be generous with that glaze. There's a good amount in here, but don't skip that little bit of lemon zest. If you're making the blueberry scones, oh, it's so good. It just adds some, it just makes it so vibrant and amazing. Okay, here we go. Just, I like to just drizzle with the spoon. It's the easiest, less dishes and things to mess up. Okay. The glaze is a little bit wet initially, but after like an hour or so, it'll harden and, and uh, solidify on there so you can store them easily, which I love. And I can almost taste this glaze. My mouth is watering. It has begun. <laughs> All right, it is time for the taste test. And I'm definitely not gonna wait for the glaze to, to harden up because <laughs> I can't do that to myself. All right, um, let's pick one. Which one will it be? Which one is the lucky scone? <laughs> All right, I think this one. This one has seemingly the most glaze and it is calling it my name, it has my number. Okay, all right, and just, just dive into it. Oh my goodness, look at this, look at this. It's a little drippy, <laughs> it's like glaze all over the place. That's okay, that's okay. Okay, here we go. Mm. Oh, take a look at that texture. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> This is the perfect scone recipe. It's just an amazing base. It is tender and soft on the inside, but also flaky and crisp on the outside. And it's got layers and then pack it in with fruit. Oh, this is such a treat. I love this as dessert or this has been my breakfast right here just with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It's wonderful, yum. Oh, but this is so, so delicious. And you can really taste the little bit of lemon zest in the glaze, which lemon and blueberries, you know, it's just like an epic combination. This is my personal favorite scone flavor combo. It is good, it's so good. And then the lemon in the glaze too, it just makes those blueberries really shine. There's something about baking blueberries, it just makes them all like jammy and sweet and tangy. <laughs> Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> you can put just about anything in these scones too. Try it with your favorite berry. I love to dice fresh strawberries and fold that in. It is so good to have layers of fresh strawberry in your scones. You can try all different kinds of glaze or you can just leave them plain and simple as the best vanilla scones and enjoy them with coffee in the morning. They are such a treat and they keep really well. You can eat them at room temperature. You can warm them up a little bit in the microwave, whatever floats your boat. I know you guys are gonna love this. Make these once and you'll make them over and over and over and let me know what is your favorite variation for scones. And, um, oh, also, dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna do this one-handed because I still have glaze all over the other hand. <laughs> Our new book is out for order. I will leave a link in the notes and um, it has a really good dessert section. Lots of brand new recipes that I haven't shared anywhere else. And let me know where you guys spotted Sharky in the video. 
Plus, if you have any recipe requests, let me know. I would love to hear from you. We'll see you in the next episode of Natasha's Kitchen. Okay, I'm gonna go eat this. I'm gonna go eat this all. Oh. <laughs>